Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Implementing Health Interoperability, Lecture C. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. Number one, identify major tasks required to implement interoperability. Number two, explain why interoperability implementation projects are needed. Number three, define and discuss each phase of the interoperability implementation lifecycle. Number four, describe how to apply each phase of the interoperability implementation lifecycle to simple interoperability implementation problems. And number five, list types of production issues with interoperability and identify and describe support strategies. This lecture discusses the design phase. We will discuss best practices for designing interoperability solutions and we'll look at some examples of design decisions. Once the analysis step is completed, you now have a detailed understanding of the problem, including the gaps that must be filled. In the design phase, you determine the best way to close the gaps and architect a solution. Be creative and open to the possibility of more than one solution. Think about robustness and reuse and sometimes you will find a feasible near-term solution and a longer-term ideal solution. The design phase consists of working with the user or users to design a future workflow in support of the desired state. It also includes determining required work to fill gaps. This might require translations, mappings, filters, etc. During design, negotiation with the users and the vendors takes place you need to determine the best place to do the configuration changes or coding based on price, complexity, ease of change, reusability, and maintenance, and then negotiate a site-specific design solution. For example, maybe the vendor software will be changed or configured. Maybe a user workflow will change, or maybe translations will be written on the interface engine. These are the kinds of decisions made during the design phase. Note that it is not uncommon for changes to occur on multiple systems. During design, you determine the best solution and develop a specification describing what changes need to be made across all systems involved. Examples of the kinds of changes that occur to solve interoperability problems commonly include interface configurations on sending and receiving systems. Vendors often provide the ability to configure their interoperability capabilities to allow systems to successfully interface. Another common change are the addition of translations, filters, or mappings using interoperability tools such as the Interface Engines, Enterprise Master Patient Indexes, EMPIs, Terminology Servers, and Health Information Exchange, HIE software. Sometimes vendors must enhance that software to support a particular interoperability use case. Other changes can also help implement interoperability, such as user process changes, training, documentation or screen, database, or table configuration changes on vendor systems. There could even be changes to physical layouts of the department. Let's look at some examples. Recall Good Health Clinic's request for notifications of their patients' admissions and discharges from Caring Central Hospital. Consider the gaps found in the analysis phase before. We determined that the sending system sends A01 for admit, A02 for transfer, A03 for discharge, A11 for cancel admit, A12 for cancel transfer, and Z01 for pediatric admission but the receiving system can only receive A01 for admit and A03 for discharge. Can you determine the best way to resolve the incompatibility? The analysis step is when you find all the possible problems. The design step is where you find a solution to the problems. Sometimes you determine that some incompatibilities are not significant. For example, since Good Health Clinic does not need information about where a patient is within the hospital, it does not need A02 or A12 messages. A11 is for a canceled admission. This is important because it signals that the patient was actually not admitted. Z01 is for pediatric admissions, so this is important if the clinic sees pediatric patients. 
you need to resolve the problem of A11 not being supported by the Good Health Clinic EHR. One idea is the request an enhancement to the Good Health Clinic's EHR asking them to support A11. That would be ideal as sometimes this can be configurable as part of the implementation. But what if they cannot? Should the sending system remove it? Caring Central Hospital should not remove the A11 code if they are sending it to other systems as well. One idea is to use the hospital's interface engine to change the A11 to an A03 discharge event code and make the discharge reason, quote, admit canceled, unquote. When the Good Health Clinic's EHR receives this message, it will indicate the patient as discharged from the hospital, but the reason will be a canceled admission. Let's look at the Z01 pediatric admit incompatibility and what could be done to resolve it. Should the receiving system add support for Z01? The best long-term solution would be to have the sending system replace the non-standard Z01 with the standard A01. Assuming that is not possible in the time frame, one possible solution would be to use the hospital interface engine to change the Z01 to an A01 patient admit code. Then, the Good Health Clinic EHR would be able to receive and process it. There was another gap that was identified. The hospital sends messages about every patient admitted to the hospital. However, the Good Health Clinic EHR only wants information about their own patients. This is not a simple filter. Perhaps in your gap analysis, you found that the clinic's EHR had the ability to send an IHE patient cross-referencing message when it had a new patient to add the patient to an index. This might be useful to determine which patients are the clinic's patients. You find out that the hospital patient management system does not honor these requests. But what if the hospital EMPI did? All of Good Health Clinic EHR's patients and all of the hospital's patients could be added to the EMPI and cross-referenced to each other. Then, when a Good Health Clinic patient is admitted to the hospital, the EMPI is queried for the patient and it is determined that the patient is a Good Health Clinic patient. The admit message is forwarded on to the Good Health Clinic EHR. Diagrams are very useful in the design process. The picture above is a common diagramming format used in healthcare interoperability. Each system is represented as a box on the diagram. There are arrows on the diagram representing each individual interface and the direction of data flow. Next to each line is information about the kind of data that is sent. This diagram represents the design for the patient of notifications for Good Health Clinic. The hospital patient management system sends patient administration messages about all patients admitted, transferred, and discharged at the hospital to the interface engine. In specific, it sends HL7V2 events, A01, A02, A12, Z01, A11, and A03. When the interface engine receives a message from the hospital patient management system, it queries the EMPI to determine if the patient is a Good Health Clinic patient using the IHE patient cross-referencing, or PIX, query. However, if the message is Z01, it transforms the message into an A01 by changing the message type. If the message is A11, it transforms the message into an A03 with discharge disposition set to, quote, admit canceled, unquote. Also, whenever a new patient is added to the Good Health Clinic EHR, a message is sent via the interface engine to the EMPI to add the patient using the IHE PIX add message. This diagram, as well as narrative, would be included in the design specification so that the builders will be able to develop the necessary filters and transformations to implement the interoperability needed. Sometimes, implementers think that they can replicate or replace an interoperability solution without use case-specific customizations. 
However, each new ancillary patient population, vendor system, hospital, and user community introduces new variables, nuances, and challenges. Prior experience and sticking to standards help, but it is not enough. For example, if the Hospital Laboratory Information System, or LIS, is replaced, it is not as simple as changing the existing interfaces to point to the new LIS. Instead, the existing interfaces will most likely need to be modified to work with the new LIS. This modification could potentially be done on the interface engine. And just because the care summary to portal interface works well for the main hospital does not mean that it will work on the new hospital. Careful testing and gap analysis are needed. If the EHR is replaced, any patient-facing app that the doctor or hospital recommends to patients should be checked and potentially modified. These are just three examples, but there are many more. So make sure to make decisions based on prior research, sticking to standards, and make sure to test. Designing takes skill and strategy. Some tips on how to design robust interoperability are as follows. Number one, stick to standards as much as possible, so have vendors change to be more conformant. Number two, design for maximum reusability. That means keep the system whose interoperability capability is used the most as standard and robust as possible. For example, if the sender provides the more reusable interface, convert the receiver. Just because middleware capabilities are available does not mean that they should be used to compensate for vendors not providing robust interoperability capabilities. Middleware configurations are costly to support and manage. Use them when it is the safest choice for the patient, when it is in the best business interest of the organization, and when it will make data more reusable. Be especially careful not to do unsafe translations. Also, always ensure that patient confidentiality is not compromised. In addition to designing solutions that will require technology solutions, such as vendor or middleware configurations, new workflows also need to be designed. Recall the example in the lecture on analysis, where we discussed potential workflow issues with using an electronic lab orders interface in communicating lab tests to the laboratory. During analysis, we identified that an electronic orders interface should help reduce manual work, but some manual work will still be required, such as collecting, labeling, and receiving specimen. We need to design a way to reduce paper orders and stop requiring re-entry of orders into the LIS. One idea is for the LIS to generate labels for the specimen to be collected that include the lab order ID and patient demographic information. The nurse would use the LIS printed label to label the specimen when collected. The lab clerk would have all the information needed to check in the specimen on the LIS and get the order started without a lot of re-entry. As you can see, it is not all about designing system changes. Workflow may be redesigned as well. Here is an example of a workflow diagram depicting the current state of the lab specimen workflow as described on the previous slide. Here is an example of a workflow diagram depicting a possible solution of an improved lab specimen workflow for the process described previously. Sometimes people are tempted to skip formal design and go right into building solutions. The risk is that the solution was not carefully thought out and planned and can lead to just lengthening the build and test phases of the project. A worse outcome is implementing suboptimal solutions since advanced planning was not done. The output of the design process includes many benefits. Stakeholders have an agreed upon plan, blueprint for everything that needs to be built. Potential showstoppers and major issues were identified before time and effort were wasted in building a solution. The project plan can be refined both in terms of task identification and in terms of estimates, since you now have a much better idea of exactly what needs to be done. A valuable output of design is a document that describes what is being built. This document is helpful to the builders and allows the builders to be different than the designers. 
The design document can also be used to build both a test plan and production documentation. Note that it is common in the design process that the scope might have increased, so make sure to manage scope accordingly. This concludes Lecture C of Implementing Health Interoperability. To summarize, in the design phase, closure of gaps between the current and future states of workflow includes collaborating and negotiating with users and vendors. There could be a multitude of solutions for a problem, and one solution for one problem may not necessarily resolve a similar problem at another site. It is important to remember that design is not only applicable to systems, but also to workflows. The outcomes include a blueprint for building and documentation of the design.